Welcome you all back to Human Humane Architecture. We continue where we had stopped last time. We look at where the University of Hawaii is going, and that's actually uh, the third most important force economically that drives us here. And we were just talking about coronavirus might change all that, yes. but let's not go there no, we're today. Not talk about that today. As of now, it's the military number one, number two is tourism, and number third is uh, education, higher education, UH. So you want to see where architecturally UH is going. And we have the same panel again, comprised of the three gentlemen here of uh, Island uh, Grown de Solo Brown, otherwise in the Bishop Museum. Uh, Mr. Ron Lindgren, a friend and business partner and former employee of Ed Killingsworth, and both have left uh, one of the greatest imprints architecturally on the island, as well on the campus of Long Beach. And then myself, who has also some experience in university buildings and having built them. So the three of us will look critically as a critical panel at what's going on at UH. So let's bring up the first slide here. This is recapping here at the very bottom left is the master's plan of you guys endorsed by Intenza in the Arts and Architecture magazine. While at the bottom right is a dubious brochure that got circulated amongst the administration and it has this legend of color coding. It means for us, the darker it is, the less of a problem. And the brighter it gets, the more problematic uh, up to being torn down, which is the very yellow. And let's go to the first uh, slide. And we're completing what was still rumors based or a little bit more because it was based on that brochure. So we basically see something that is shockingly light yellow. Yes. And what is that? That's the music building, and what you see on screen is me talking about it when we were talking about UH architecture last, or September of 2018. And this is actually a complex that was built, for, I think, in the late 1950s, the bulk of it was. It has this wonderful exoskeleton of these exposed uh, ribs from which the building is almost suspended yeah. and, and hangs. And Ron, we could have never built this anywhere where we are from, right, with heavy snow loads. The, the the roof would leak like crazy. So this is a masterpiece. I, we, we're in disbelief. We can't this seed of go be gone, but it gets worse. So let's keep going here. I'm sorry. I mean, as if coronavirus wouldn't be bad enough. Yeah, Can we right. get the next slide up? So this one here is... Uh, this Snyder. is Snyder Hall. This is Snyder Hall, and this is another one of our 50s buildings that we look at very fondly, particularly with the exposed stairway or the stairway with the um, breeze block. And it originally had um, a framework of uh, louvers, vertical louvers on the well, outside. It kind of still has, right? Yeah, yeah. And we were wondering about how do you pronounce that word that I classify we, David Bowie having been we, well, andro, we, andro, yeah. androgyne, 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 androgyne or androgene, yeah. but I think we could say sexless. Okay, okay. Uh, as, as meaning that it is lacking in a lot of uh, sort of exterior pizzazz. And that, that picture in the upper right corner, you said looks like an ash fall after well, that, a volcano. I was quoting Ron. Well, Ron said that, that and, and it right. does look like there's been an ash fall from and, a volcano and eruption. And we're kind of traumatized because the building next to it, they did what you see at the bottom right. So we're, we're not very happy to see because it's yellow coated. So they say basically they said at that point they're going to keep it but drastically alter it. So we're hoping not because it's a really good building. You just need to dust it off and exactly. clean it up, right? right. Next page here. Um, is two buildings that are dark. Uh, well, the, the top left one is the architect. You grew up in the house of him, Asipov. Um, Saunders Hall, they said they're not going to do anything to it. They did They did spalling repair, which is fine, but yeah. they also painted parts. No. They had no reason to be no. painted. No, we don't, like, we don't like brutalist or plain concrete buildings being painted. Exactly. And to the right is Mr. Library, Will Bruder, with his most famous uh, Phoenix Public Library at the bottom right, who visited and, and who fell in love with Sinclair Library. We heard it's going to be turned into a student learning center, yes. which is great. Yes. But we're wondering why does it have to be altered for that because it's light green. Yeah. We, don't, we didn't know yet. Next slide. Then Holmes Hall, the engineering school, which, by the way, is an SOM building. And there were previous rumors they want to infill the courtyards. And we said, this is really bad because, as you said, then it has to be air conditioned. Yeah. And John Hara had actually proposed a good compromise in enclosing them, but only the center of it and leaving then four courtyards around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, right, right, he's a great right. master of negotiation. Yes, yes, right? yes. Right. But, you know, what are they doing? And next slide. Uh, these are out of the uh, discussion because they're 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 not touch color coded, 
and the gateway dorms, which are single loaded corridors, easy breezy, perfect. But the one on the top right, which is a product of what UH will continue to do, which I call PPP, P3, Public Private Partnership, oh, is yes. an EFIS piece of shit. Oh, and yes. that might want to be torn down because it didn't work out. But they don't touch that. They don't talk about it. But next slide is something that they sure can touch because it's out of their reach because it's East West Center and that's IMP. Yeah. It's untouchable. Thank goodness. Next slide. Yeah. However, the emerging generation at the top left was studying that and were proposing an additional dormitory space, which I guess there is a need to follow the orientation of East West Center, meaning it's facing uh, north and south. But then our least favorite project, which is a private development down the hill at University and King Street, that big monster, Halle Mahana, got really bad news in the student uh, newspapers there on campus that it has mold in there. Yeah. And then this at the very top right thank you showed up. Someone took that for us in a sort of informal presentation. And we identified to the right of it must be Hala Manoa. Yeah. Hey, to the yeah. left must be Holmes Hall, we just talked about. So this building is the opposite and it's facing east west. Yeah. And we don't see what yeah. Ron, you explained to us, which Ed had made sort of integral to his administration building on your campus, which is which is heavily yeah. louvered. Yeah. So we don't see that. Right. So this is a C minus or a D or a right. fail. Right. Right. For says us says the, the teacher. There yes. We go. Yes. Next slide. Um, and so now we're getting out of the sort of more confirmed rumor phase to into a the more, facts phase. Right. Because right. here it says February fourth. UH came out of the bush or wherever closet mm -hmm. and throwing this at us. Yeah. And it, it and it starts out, I think, with a distraction because it wants to sell us as the most important project to make the whole campus pedestrian right. friendly or right. Car right. free of cars, right. which we're right. always supporters. Yes. But most is actually already walkable. It, that that is true and and I, I can I, I do agree mm -hmm. there are a lot of car, little weird yeah, car yeah, yeah, places yeah, yeah, yeah. and little alleys and stuff yeah, yeah. that that are complicated. They just, yeah, anyway, I can I can go with, along with getting yeah, rid of those. Because now we move on and see actually more shocking stuff. Next page. So this is here. Uh, top left is tropical tutor Bill Chapman, current dean of the School of Architecture. To the top right is uh, tropical here Rockwood, who has been recognized by the great Kenneth Frampton, one of your great colleagues, architectural historian, and has published him as one of the masters in architecture with this project that you see there. So these are both capacities yeah. in their field. Right. And they uh, always love the portables yeah. as being very Jean Prouvé, very easy breezy, yeah, elevated, they are. They are. Glenn Mercady, touch the earth lightly. Yeah. And at the bottom is what they say in this newsletter, the removal of over 50 one story wooden portable buildings. So next slide. By the way, this was the event that you both were keynote mm -hmm. speakers, yes. the National Docomo yes. Symposium. And while at the bottom you see familiar faces, as in the middle, uh, our uh, current president-elect Docomo Graham Hart, but it was an international event. Yes, so it was. people from all over the world. And look at the very left. These are pictures by Andrea Gretschy. These are the portables. Yes, they are. These people will come back. Yes. And when they miss, then they will say, what happened? What happened to all your they portables? Be, right. They won't be positively surprised. No. Right? Go to the next slide. So this is shocking. I let you guys talk about it because I almost can't. Uh, do we have to? Um, they're talking about, this is Kuykendall, correct? Yeah. So they're talking about completely demolishing Kuykendall Hall. Is that correct? As much as I'm in disbelief, but and that's yeah, what it says and, there. And, and you pointed out, and this this has it was restored, was it not? Well, to no, a degree, this th one was. There was the plan. My previous colleague Steve Meter had basically sacrificed his career to become. This, the campus architect and yeah. his baby became the rejuvenation, the reactivation yeah. of Kaikendal Hall. And yeah. we, ironically, the three of us have talked about its architect, Takashi Anbi, in the last volume three show about Harbor Square and showed these examples of what a tropical exotic master yes. he was. Yes. And, and now after Steve Meter had sort of basically made it, uh, pushed it to construction document level, he could have just done it. Yes. Now he's gone because he got so frustrated and his followers basically now go the opposite to basically trash it. Yeah. And Ron, uh, don't we see a similarity between the picture yeah. at the very top, uh, bottom left next to the Soto and the one at the very middle at the top? Yeah. Uh 
at the very top center uh, is uh, an image of Ed's very first building at CSUOB, which is was an ad administration building. Uh, it was definitely mid-century modern, and no one is thinking of touching that no. in any way. The thought of taking it down would be a travesty, uh, because a, a building, as long as it's well maintained over that period of time, uh, is well worth saving as an example of that style. And uh, uh, I, it's hard to believe that uh, Kuykendall might be uh, on the list of those to be gone. Yeah, and they're both examples. I mean, you can see the similarity of the volumetric massing yes. and also the louvering around yes. it. So bring the louvers yes. back. We've been talking about that. Louvers technology is better these days. Yeah. What yeah. hasn't worked in the past will work in the future. Yeah. So it's like unbelievable. So get to the next slide. And when I had the flu, luckily not the worst one, but the yeah. pretty bad still, I was crawling up to the health center and the, I took the bottom picture where you see a portable on the left and hard to see, sorry, the lighting was bad, but you see, can see Kuykendall yes. sticking out in the middle. And I'm thinking when you really want to tear stuff down, why don't you tear down the really bad stuff? Right. Like the one at the top, mm -hmm. this big monster from the mm -hmm. early nineties, totally mm -hmm. hermetic, yep. totally invasive dynamite bulldoze that away <laughs> or uh, one of my students yesterday said martin hold on can't we retrofit that to easy breezy and i said right on please yeah. do that yeah but it's isn't it ironic to tear down the good old yes. beacons yes and keep the shitty ones yes and it's also just again energy usage yeah we're talking about less energy uses versus more energy exactly. uses and going to less energy uses through the older material through the older buildings yeah 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 and go to the next slide because there's unfortunately more to come. So now we're reading at the mm -hmm. top that Snyder will be demolished and replaced with a new building. Yeah. So this rendering that made us be right. puzzled right. is actually a new building, but it looks so much alike Snyder Hall. Yeah. Why would you tear something really good down, replace it with something that almost looks the same? Right. That right. seems absurd. At, at, at a huge cost, at a and, much and again, bigger cost. We're saying at being expert in the construction business, you can't build it, at least not for the money that's yes, available. Of course not. To the delicacy no, that stuff has no, been done in the mid century. No, no of right? course not. Of because course not. Because the skills is gone. Yeah. And, and, and it would be that. and it would be prohibitively expensive to try to mimic that. Absolutely. And we've talked about that a lot. Even inexpensive buildings yep. of that time period had a great deal more e to them exactly. that you could do now e than what you could do now. Absolutely. So next slide. And this is again coming back to Sinclair Library, endorsed by Mr. Library Will Bruder. So now we get more. There's a rendering. And what do you see in the distance there? Well, you see probably Diamond Head through that big wall, glass wall. And what that means is that if if that is in fact what's what's happening there, mm -hmm. that in the afternoon that's gonna be a glassed in box. Because that's which facing is, south. Exactly. <laughs> so that's gonna be very hot. So even if people do sit there, which they probably won't because it's un unimpeded you know, sunlight, that means it has to be heavily air conditioned. So isn't this ironic? You tear down a bioclimatic masterpiece yeah. uh, by Frank Haynes, who's mm -hmm. the founder of Architects Hawaii, mm -hmm. and turn it into an invasive hermetic thing. That's I mean, right. that's, that's sarcastic. It's a glass, it's like, a, it's like it's, a greenhouse. Yeah, and right now it has jealousies. I'm sitting there, it's easy yeah. breezy, it's yeah, just yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't touch it. No. It's wasting money. Just and fix the money it up. has to come from somewhere. Just fix right? it up. Yeah, and it's it's on the registry because that's a late fifties building. Oh, yeah, by absolutely. The way, right? Oh I yeah. Mean, no, no, no. That is that's that's a very prominent yeah, mid century yeah. oh, building. Absolutely, yeah. And move on to the next slide. Uh, and this gets you going. Oh. Because it says Keller Hall will undergo renovations yeah. to modernize. I know, and this upsets me because Keller is one of my absolute favorites and in a, in a number of ways. And there are a lot of interesting, fascinating, I irreplaceable aspects to uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. So when it's going to be renovated, yeah. I am scared. And why and how and, you know, yeah. don't. No. So next slide. And this gets us closer to while there were rumors that the new dorm building on Dole Street has to do something with the worst building just off campus on University yeah. and King. Here it's confirmed because in that newsletter, they say Gray Star is going to be the developer, and that is the developer, as it points out at right. the bottom right of this shitty Holland Mahana. Yeah. Yeah. That at the top left, we see its ground floor, which is invasive mainland shop front fixed yes. glazing that is going to hit by the sun. And at the bottom, this is 
there's no doubt this is the frontage to Dole Street, yeah. which, by the way, is south. And yeah. the renderer is honest enough to show how the tropical sun is going to be. It's going to go it. right in there. So what are you thinking? This, this company, by the way, who's consulting, their name is MK Think. <laughs> I think there's something they're not doing is thinking. So what's the point about their name? Yeah, there we go. I am ironic. It's next, supposed to be ironic. Next slide. And, and Ron, uh, either you provided that picture that, unfortunately, as much as we would love, the world is still, you know, intact uh, at, at, at Long Beach. Uh, this is actually showing not either because that's proposed on the edge of campus at your beautiful uh, place, campus, right? Yes, yes. I, I have s some real problems with this. Uh, here's uh, a blank faced, rather bald faced building, flat skinned. Someone recognizes that the building is completely uninteresting unless you bite out some <laughs> yeah. three or four story yeah. lanai's, <laughs> right, right. which are public lanai's. And all I can say is, those strange uh, public lanai's, God knows who's going to use them, right. they do not make up for the fact that there should be private lanai's off of each yeah. and every yeah. uh, livable space. Right. And you said this before, and you sit up there at the bottom, at the top right, and you're looking at the first affordable by Howard Hughes, which uses the same trick. And we were saying, well, this traces back to Architectonica at the Atlantis in Miami. And I quote you, Ron, that you basically said, well, that was in postmodernism and it was a joke. And it was a good one. While wow, these are really bad jokes. Yeah. And I, this is just classy. I will continue to quote you on that one. Let's move on before we get too depressed on each and every on the slide. Yes, right. And move to positive because as bad as all that is, we want to make a pitch and saying our university finally deserves what you so greatly had from the very beginning, Ron, yeah. a master planner. Right. And who qualifies most, who has done most of the work, mm -hmm. actually master planning for the new campus uh, out there west, Oahu, yes. uh, John Hara and Mayumi. And as we were going through, they have done many at the best of buildings on the UH campus. Yeah. So I would say they should be at the top yeah. of the nomination list. Right, for doing, if they're gonna be redoing stuff, they should be the ones who should be redoing it. Exactly, or overseeing it as the master planner exactly. because they have the master skills exactly. Exactly. and they have documented them, right? right. So they could and be they like, know the campus very they well. They could be like Ed, you know, then selecting architects whom they trust, right. Right. not based upon uh, aunt and auntie, uh, you know, thing, but really like saying, well, we, we are in charge of the campus, so we yes. got to make sure people who get it yes. and who would work within the genetic code would, would are able to yeah, work and it's, on that. And it's, and it's unfortunately late in the game to be attempting to do this to the mm -hmm. UH campus. But not too but late. But it's not I'm too saying. late. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it is. It's not too late. Yeah. And it could be, if, there, if this is going to be a mass redevelopment, yeah, yeah. then let's say, okay, a plan, yeah, an yeah. overall yeah. plan, yeah. an overall plan that people actually like, well, and that we're keeping all these things in mind that we're talking it's about. Sort of like you know our tragic theme of that's hovering above us is the coronavirus. It's right really now is. is the time to tackle it, right? Absolutely. Because otherwise it might be too late. I think similar to here. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Have some other suggestions. You know, when you were on, we're talking about sort of this mandate of, of red brick that reminded me of my previous school, which is the University of Arizona campus in Tucson. There's a historic postcard, could be from your archive, uh, <laughs> the soda at the top left. And that is not an excuse to not evolve that theme as this architect, which is uh, renowned Eddie Jones, has done this beautiful, my former workplace. Aren't you jealous now? Yeah. This is the School of Architecture building. Oh, wow. It's basically a biclimatic masterpiece. At the bottom left is facing uh, Speedway Boulevard. It's facing north. Of course, Will would say it still needs vertical shading yeah. because the sun comes around, but that's sort of nitpicking in detail. And to the south, it's just something that maybe every building should do here, because we're so tropical, this is the beginning of this facade to be vegetated yeah. and shaded by that. Yeah. So that is possible. So Eddie would be another one to consider. And next slide here is who you consider. Oh, okay, then this is a fairly young firm. Uh, Richard Bauer is their name. This is an optical science building. Again, in the desert, they push it to the next level that not only the south facade that you see on the top left is enclosed, but also east and west. 
and it's a double facade. I've been standing up there, and if I still would have had hair, so Ron, you could have dried your hair there, because once the sun hits the metal, it heats up and it drags and sucks the heat. So you get, you call this a thermal chimney. So very intelligent. And again, using this sort of rusted metal yeah. is the evolution of the red brick. Right. Right. And okay, so those are exterior metal, yeah. metal freestanding walls. Yeah, and they're they, kind they, of they're kind of rusty colored. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're saying we're endorsing another person who you identified by interviewing them yeah. and having reviewed their work, which yeah. is the Maloidi Lofts. This is Ted Paul Studio, yeah. who are the most currently most critically practicing architects. Mm -hmm. So there, there's another one that you would consider yeah, exactly. to be qualified. Exactly. Next slide. Uh, and this is uh, who you most identify with my former desert days, uh, uh, Rick Joy, Mr. Rick Joy, who has now after all these years and small residential work similar there's a similarity by the way to the other modern master your friend at killingsworth ron uh, that he has done small residential projects and and has proven himself and here is a proposal for a huge sort of mixed use um uh, on the edge of campus and again you see louvers you see a sort of a consideration of climate and culture uh, at the top is Rick and his, uh, his right hand, Philip Nair, a German buddy of mine. We're hanging out there in, in Mexico for Corona. It's not the virus. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, the it's for the stuff. beer. And so, uh, you know, and next slide is just like, you know, uh, mm. this is, this is uh, how uh, Rick's uh, and buddies have proven outside of their turf. This is in Princeton University. This is a transit mm -hmm. station they have done recently. So Rick Joy and his firm, Another one that we would endorse, and that, by the way, Bandit Kanistakan, who is equally humble, as we will soon sort of tragically find out as you, Ron, in this circumstance, Bandit is as well and has endorsed or sort of nominated uh, Rick as well. Let's go to yeah. the next slide, um, because um, this would obviously the guy who would do the best job, right? So, Ed. This yeah, is, that's Ed. That's Ed. This is certainly the, uh, the architect and the campus master planner, the only one in the United States who had a an almost 40 year tenure as a campus master planner. And having such a long tenure is part of the success of the CSULB campus. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, I, we screenshotted this from this YouTube out there that Harvey Keller did it back then. And it's called uh, Long Beach Treasures. And we've been quoting that a couple of times. And, the pictures at the at the bottom is that that Ed very proudly walks Harvey by the models that again Larry Stricker built, as we know, and we will see Larry in a bit here. And he also is very proud of of these um, uh, academic projects, but they're actually not on the Long Beach campus, but elsewhere, as there are a couple more. Ron, can you uh, educate us about them? Yes. Uh Ed and Harvey are looking uh, at the bottom right at a model of uh, a non-denominational religious center at uh, the University of Southern California, uh, which Ed was very proud of as a building that enclosed uh, a quiet contemplative courtyard. Ooh, and, yeah. to, and to the right, you just see a little bit of structure, uh, uh, some uh, sweeping, uh, sweeping beams. The roof was removed from the model so you could look down in and see the interior furnishings. But this happened to be a student union uh, at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh College, and it got away from Ed's structural impressionism in which structure is exposed uh, strongly. And here, the entire building is, uh, is engulfed in what turned out to be a beautiful sweeping roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there were a lot of other work that Ed was called upon uh, through California. Uh, another student union at Cal State Riverside at Santa Barbara, he did some graduate student housing in a health clinic. And uh, also at USC, which I've, I've forgotten, uh, he, he designed with the dean of the school, the architecture school at USC. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And since, uh, you know, Ed is very much with us, but spiritually. Yes. So he probably, since he's not physically with us anymore, yeah. he might not qualify. No, he's not. So, but let's that. go to the next slide because I would like to nominate this gentleman 
who is with us, and literally and figuratively speaking, yeah. that's Mr. Ron Lindgren. So yes. how about you, Ron, stepping in and becoming the master planner? Because not only have you worked on campuses, which we have demonstrated, but the top row shows all the finest work that you have left, uh, gifted us on the island. Correct, and so he's already, but this man, Ron, has already worked here in the Hawaiian Islands. There you Islands. go. Yes, he has. So, Ron, go for it. Do you accept the nomination, please? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I have to respectfully demure the nomination. The fact is that a job uh, of a uh, campus master planner uh, is a part-time job. You know, it has to be adjunct to an architectural practice that pays the bills. And also, unlike some current presidential nominee candidates, mm -hmm. this near octogenarian recognizes when age takes me out of the throw. And besides, and most importantly, I can't afford to live in Hawaii. Oh, oh you can live with us, right? We can work on that. Well, one. I think I think Ron is. It's, I think Ron has earned his uh, retirement yeah, and, no, his, and his and his no no headaches. Existence. Well deserved. So yes. let's move on to the next one. So whoever becomes it, you know, that's what we want to see. We want to see yeah. people who have a plan and can make models. There's in very small. We see him in bigger in the next couple of shows. Larry Stricker who built this great model that you kindly pho photographed in the last couple of weeks and we've been featuring here and there. And at the very uh, next slide, uh, which is, which is uh, again, we need visions like that. Yes, we do. That basically are not this sort of androgen, you know, mm -hmm. fly ash kind of thing uh, lost in space, but it's actually uh, the hybrid of, of landscape and architecture. That was what I was exactly gonna say right? because this clearly shows uh, landscape architecture as well as yeah. building architecture. And so does our last slide here, our concluding slide, uh, which, how did you put this for perfectly what we see on the left, Ron? Well, uh, it's, it's dream uh, of a campus was that it would be, uh, find itself eventually in a park-like setting. Yeah. And he was happiest with the architecture. In this case, the mildly monumental student union is lost in the greenery. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're basically here saying to the Board of Regents, to the President, to the Provost, please come up with a national search for an expertise, yeah. an experienced uh, person in that area. And we're closing with saying, luckily, that person doesn't have to start from nowhere, although things are pretty messed. Yes. There could be a, a theme <laughs> and a thread. And can we get the last page uh, one more second? Because what is the theme that you identify? Well, one of the, th the main things we've discovered is, is uh, courtyards. Mm -hmm. And that whether that was an official theme or not, that's present in a lot of the buildings at UH. Let's make that a real theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that, uh, hopefully you guys listen to us, you bosses up there. And with that, uh, we're going to take a little extended spring break trip, but then the three of us are going to be back with more exciting uh, uh, reports on Killingsworth yeah. and Hawaii and beyond. Yeah. And until then, please stay educatedly, tropically exotic. Bye-bye. Goodbye.